joined now by uh, with Dave DeMarinas, the head coach of the Coburg Cougars, and now sitting with the interim GM title after the departure of Adam Yon. And Dave, let's start there with uh, the management of the structure of this team currently right now. Uh, who's making the decisions on the ice and who's taking control of the off-the-ice decision? Because I know Bob Breckles has been named director of player operations. Alex Guinea has been uh, named as assistant GM as well. Yeah, some changes since uh, we last talked. Um, um, myself, uh, again, I'm all the player personnel decisions uh, I'm making. Um, I'm the one that's communicate, communicating with the other GMs around the league and making uh, the decisions based on the player personnels. Um, I do report to uh, to Bob, who then reports to ownership. Um, you know, it's more of a the joint venture with all of us together and we work together uh, in regards to a player personnel decision. But uh, I guess at the final, the final say comes to me and then goes to Bob and then the ownership gives it the A-OK -okay or the no. So that's just the lay of the land, how it's working right now. It's been really good. Actually, uh, we've got a really good dynamic with the group uh, that we got assembled. It's been a lot of fun, um, you know, and just different, different opinions. And uh, it's always good to look at things at different angles. So it's been a really good working dynamic the last couple of weeks. What's Alex's position going to be with the club? Alex is uh, a man of many trades. Uh, um, he's, he helps with the trades. Um, he's uh, on the business side of things. He's focusing on the junior C program in Port Hope. I, I know that's in his job title as well. So he, it's a big focus there. Uh, but he's heavily involved with the community now in the Cobra community and the Northumberland community. Um, you know, and he's working alongside me doing a lot of the day-to-day uh, -day operations of things. Do you suspect, uh, Dave, that the interim title of GM will stay with you or are they currently looking for a full-time GM or what's the dynamic currently right now? Um, it's just day-to-day -day right now, to be honest with you. I don't know. Um, uh, I don't mind the responsibility. I've done it before, um, so I'm okay with that right now. Um, my main focus is to coach. I love to coach. Um, it always has been, but I, again, I've done this job before in, in Pickering and I've been okay with it. Um, you know, as long as you got good help and good people surrounded by me, I'm okay with it, which we do. So it's, it's, it's been a, a pretty easy transition to be honest with you. On ice day, how much conversation have you had with the town of Coburg, if any, or the organization have had uh, with the dynamic, uh, with the CCC being closed? Have you gotten any indication at all as to when that facility might be open? Not as of yet. We're hoping to know something in the next couple of weeks. Um, I know it's basically with a soft opening right now provincial government's laid out for everybody um, in the regional opening. So basically, I think we're going to be waiting a word from the provincial government that will go back down to the regional governments. And once uh, I guess we get it to stage three, I'm assuming is when uh, we can get back in there. But I don't think we'll be getting the back there playing sports, maybe just getting back in there to, you know, to uh, get the little end of our room again and see what we got and stuff like that. But um, I don't know when we'll be back in. Um, I wish I could tell you, but I think we should probably have a clear, more clear of an indication in the next couple of weeks. Positive step forward for the all junior leagues uh, around the country last Thursday when Hockey Canada made the announcement that uh, you that they will now allow the specific leagues to make their own decisions as to when uh, things can start up again. Talk about what the discussion has been around the OJHL. Yeah, they've been very informative, to be honest with you. They kept us in the loop and we've had um, meetings every couple of weeks and they've um, kept us up to date, which has been really good because it's just, it's been a real difficult time for everyone. And there's so much unknown. Um, but we've had a couple of zoom calls and they've basically just let us know. And, um, last week they gave us the green light from the OHF and hockey Canada that June 1st would, um, go on as usual. So that's been a, a real positive step. Um, that's why you're seeing, you're seeing trades and signings uh, from around the league. Um, basically, the, what you expressed to me is what they've told us. And we're just going to have to wait with the provincial government to give us the AOK -okay and the Minister of Sport in, in our province. Um, you know, but I personally, I feel like I I think the kids are going to have to be able to go back to school first before I think sports is going to happen. I think they'll coincide with each other. So um, I think that's where we're going to have to look for in the, in the future is, you know, um, that step to happen first. 
what's the day-to-day -day operations currently like for this organization and all junior hockey teams right now? Because it's certainly different than what it's been over the last number of years uh, gearing up for a hockey season. You know, the OJ uh, DL League would probably be up and running right now. Uh, lots of talks, lots of players signing, trying to get off ice stuff. So how much does that change this year? It's a little bit different, but I'll be honest with Mark, it's a little more, um, it's, it's probably been a little more busy to be honest with you, because there's so much uncertainty and how you're building your roster is a little different because you got to take into account if things go in different directions. Um, you know, we, we've been, we've been obviously very active uh, with building our roster and building our team and keeping up with our players. And um, you know, my phone from doing this job for the last couple of years, it's probably been more busy than it has been in the past. Um, I think just because there's so many questions and so many people want to know what direction everything's going to be going in. And so I think just the phone's been a lot more busier and just explaining what's going to maybe transpire in the future. So um, everything's business as usual. Um, it's, it, our phones are ringing and it's, you know, it's a typical off season to be honest with just minus the camps. Dave, at the end of game four last year, you had 20 guys signed to player to player cards. Out of those 20 guys, 14 are eligible to be able to return this year. Obviously, 13 now with the trade yesterday for uh, Darren Beatty. How many familiar faces can people expect to see uh, in a Cougars uniform from last year? Um, I don't know right now. Um, there's a lot of good players from our, from our, from our team last year. But what I'll say is, is I think we all expect to be better. Um, and I think the one area that we need to address as a whole as an organization, we, gotta, we, gotta, we have to have more skill. Um, the, the skill is a big component. And there's a couple of the check boxes that we're looking for, being a good person, um, having speed, being headsy, having IQ and stuff like that. So I think we need a lot more of all those um, things that I just mentioned. So, um, you know, we've, we've, you've probably seen on social media, the letter of intents that went out. Um, so there's been a few changes there. We got some really good young pieces coming in. Um, but, you know, I, I think we got to mold this group to the way that we like it. Um, and then try to, you know, see where all the pieces may fall. But I know all I, I do know is we have a lot of good character kids from our group last year that are eligible to return. And, you know, I'm hopeful uh, many of them will be back. But again, so many things can transpire over the course of an off season. From my count so far, Dave, it looks like uh, you know, it looks like you signed five kids or have a letter of intent from five kids that have been posted with a trade yesterday. Out of that one, who's the one that really sticks out of the out of the group of six that uh, uh, people will be like, "Wow, that kid can play." There, there's a few. Um, top of my head is probably the both defensemen that we signed, Bodie Nobes and um, and Thomas Stewart. Um, they are high impact, ready to play kids. Now um, I'll start with Bodie, just unbelievable skater, um, watching him play at Stansted, um, highly recruited. He's a fourth round pick in the queue. Um, his hockey sense and offensive ability of jumping in the rush playing from the back end is just uh, phenomenal. And um, I think he's developed and mature as a player. I saw him two years ago and saw him last year and saw him get better over the course of the year. He's ready to jump in and play in this league right away. Um, and he's going to, he's going to show uh, our fans and our community what he can do. And uh, he comes from a, a great bloodline of, of hockey and um, he's going to be counted upon big time with our group. And Thomas Stewart is a kid I've known for a long time. I AP'd him when I was uh, in Pickering um, as a 16 year old. And when he played as a 16 year old, I was just blown away. And then last year watching him in the playoffs um, and down the stretch with Pickering and what he can do um, being young, but playing such, like almost 17, 18 minutes in the playoffs last night or last year. It was like nothing to him. He, he took the pressure right on, um, head on, and he, you know, played very well. So those two kids were very, very excited about. I know as a management team, when we got those two done, uh, we were very excited about. What do you know about uh, Andrew Kimball? Um, comes from a great program. Um, he's um, very offensive, good kid. Um, He's got a great work ethic, leadership qualities, um, and he has an act of putting up points. And we've noticed that in his game. Um, coming from that Millbrook program, um, 
summer where again y'all from wellington came from the year previous um knowing what he can do there and doing our homework on him and we i think you've pretty much seen we put an emphasis on um on prep school hockey this year so it's a little bit it's out of the box it's different it's uh it's great hockey uh, and i feel like we we tapped into it pretty good this year so um no he's going to be a big piece and he's 19 years of age so it's it's not like he's a younger player he's a guy that can come in and play an expanded role right away but um he brings in the offensive ability in his game right away and i think he can help us another one of those prep school kids i believe dave is jesse galassi yeah yeah jesse is um just very smart. Um, some people will look at him and be a little bit undersized and you look at his height, um, but he makes up for it in, in his smarts and his skating ability. Now he, he, he wore the, he wore the C at Gilmore Academy, um, watched him play a ton this year. Um, and Bob watched him throughout the course of the year a lot, just really fell in love with the way he understood the game, how he skated his, his hockey IQ. He was a, he was a big time leader on the back end for that group, played big minutes and he plays the way we want to play. And you can see that we're bringing guys in that can skate that are very headsy, that can read the play. Um, and he's another guy that we can, we want to play with the puck and he knows how to do that. Um, he doesn't basically, his mind doesn't get scrambling when he has the puck on his stick, he makes good decisions with it. Um, so he's another good one that we got. Last committed player so far, Dave, uh, that you've been able to sign is Colby Poulin, uh, who played last year with the St. Thomas Stars. Yeah, he had 18 goals last year for uh, a team that wasn't that high up in the standings, but he played a big time role. And um, I've known I've known him for a while, um, playing in the Clareton uh, Minor Hockey Association. And it was a good year for him to develop last year in Junior B. Um, Big time speed, offensive ability, can score goals. Um, he gets it on the four check. Um, he's just an energizer buddy. When it comes to when he's on the ice, you can notice his speed and his energy. Um, and he's matured a lot in his game. Um, you know, he's got some room for growth and he's got some, uh, you know, some interest from some Division One schools. And you know, he's coming here to take that next step. And, you know, he's going to help us too big time. So we're really excited about him. And finally, let's talk about the trade yesterday, trading uh, Darren Beattie, who uh, played a pivotal role last year, played a lot of minutes on defense last year, and uh, bringing in Isaac Pascal. Yeah, you know what? Um, Darren was a really good soldier for us, really liked his game. Um, this deal just fits basically, you, as we mentioned just earlier, the abundance of guys that recruited on the back end get, um, you know, gave us a chance to maybe look at something like this. Um, you know, we're going to miss Darren's skating ability and his ability to, you know, cover a lot of ice. But Isaac's a kid that, um, you know, was AP in Trenton two years ago, um, went from junior C to basically the BCHL. That's a big time jump. And he did very well out there and watched, you know, a lot of his, a lot of his hockey and did a lot of homework on guys, uh, coaches that he's played for in the past. And, you know, we find he's a kid that can be able to, I think, break out in our league this year. Um, you know, so he's going to be coming in to play a big time role for us. Uh, you know, the trade, I think, worked for both teams. Um, you know, Darren is looking to make, you know, play a little bit of change of scenery. And Isaac's coming in to help us because we're, you know, I think a little bit offensively, um, you know, stuck a little bit last year. And I think he can help us produce uh, some timely goals and some put up some points for us as well. Yeah, it's no doubt that people uh, uh, around the club last year realized that uh, you might have been offensively challenged at times last year uh, throughout the regular season and, and the playoffs. Yeah, it, it's something that we've taken note of, obviously. It was, it was evident. Um, you know, it just, you know, I think at times we – we played well in the offensive zone. We created chances. We were there, just a lack of finish at times. And, you know, it was really getting frustrating when we were, we were putting up 30, 35 shots a night and the majority of them were coming in the house with traffic or whatever it may be and just not going in. And uh, there's a time where you got to look yourselves in the mirror and go, we got to add some more skill set and some guys that can, you know, you know, put away their chances. And, you know, we, we, we knew that right away at the end of the year. And that was our main focus this year is to add some more skillful players up front. And that's what we're going to be looking to do here in the, in the next couple of weeks. One thing you brought up, Dave, was talking about going the um, um, prep school route uh, this year. Uh, three of the five signings thus far uh, by this club have been through prep school. Why go that way uh, rather than the conventional manner? Um, I've always been familiar with it um, since I played, to be honest with you. And I feel there's a lot of good hockey players in, in that in those neck of the woods. And prep school is a really good league. Um, midget hockey is great minor midgets hockey is great um it's always 
touchy feely when it comes to a, a, a minor midget kid coming up. They got to be ready. They got to be in the proper position. They have to have ice time and development. I think kids in prep school are just a little bit older. Um, they've matured a little bit more, um, finishing grade 12 or 11 and coming into the league. Um, and it just, it just for us, it's a good fit. It's, um, you know, I think a lot of these kids that are coming in and play for really good programs, they're on the ice every day. They, they're working out their craft. They've expressed by going the prep school route they want to in their post-secondary career play play collegiate hockey so it just kind of fits what we're doing here so yeah it's um something that we looked upon um you know probably around december um and we just try to capitalize on the best we could anybody can do the research dave and see that there was lots of turnover last year uh with coaches management players with this organization obviously you're now having to go out and recruit for the 20 2021 team when parents bring that up, how do you address the situation? Do you address it as it was just a blip on the map, those things happen? Or how do you deal with that? Because people can find out that information pretty quickly as to what happened last year. Yeah, no, again, we can't deny what happened last year. There's, there's, there were some changes made through the course of the season. Um, I think on my big focus, and I think our ownership's big focus, is having stability um, and having the right people in place and for a long period of time, and that is our goal. Um, yeah, that was a blip, 100%. This organization's one of the best organizations in the league. Um, you know, we're one of the only the two organizations in our league to win a national championship. Um, and, you know, what 2017 is not too far off. And we understand what it took there that year to win a national championship. And our ownership and our management team understands what we got to do to go forward to, you know, put us in a situation to maybe somewhat in the sometime in the future to get there. So yeah, that was a blip. Um, our, our ownership's great. Our, our management team's awesome. Our coaching staff's intact, all coming back. We're looking forward to it. Um, and you know what? Stability is huge. And I understand that, but we're here. Um, and you know, we're here for the long haul and we're all devoted to Coburg 100%. I'll get you in on this final question, Dave, what's your message to the fans, to, uh, to the players, to the potential players, to the sponsors, to everybody that could be involved in this club? Um, we're ready to go. Um, we have worked extremely hard um, this off season and since Christmas to put a product on the ice where people can come to the rink and be proud of. We want our fans to be proud of the, of the team that they see on the ice. We want them to come and be excited every Monday night when they, when they come to the CCC, we want our players to be excited to be Colbert Cougars. We don't want kids to just come there and take advantage of it. We want kids that really want to be there. We want hockey players. We want guys that want to make the step and we want guys that are going to work extremely hard and our coaching staff will match the work ethic of our players and same with our management team and our fans will be rewarded for it. Um, and, you know, we're looking to do, do good things this year, 100%. We want to make everyone proud. We want everyone to put a smile on their face and, you know, people come to the rink and our players come to the rink and be proud to put on a Cobra Cougar jacket or a sweater, or whatever it may be, any apparel and leave the rink satisfied and go, you know, that's a good group of kids. That's a good team. That's hardworking, hard nosed. Um, and they're exciting every time we come watch them play. That's my message to be honest with you. That's the type of person I am. Um, and that's, I hope, um, you know, our players use that every day to showcase to our fans. Thanks.